Let's talk about LEDs. LEDs are pretty cool. They actually take the current going through the diode, and by the way, LED stands for light emitting diode. Yeah. So um, let me just draw one. They take the current that's traveling through, depending on the amount of current that's going through there, um, they take that current and they, they kind of jump onto the dynamic of the current, the, the current flowing through, and they use the flow itself to generate light. They're pretty cool. The way that we use this symbol is actually we draw a standard diode, and then we have actually just put two little arrows on the diode kind of just going out. Now, there are actually a whole bunch of different kinds of LEDs. And there are symbols for those in the PowerPoint. And I suggest very strongly yeah. that you study them and get to know them because those symbols will be on the exam. And we'll be using some other ones. We'll be using the laser diode one is my favorite. It's really cool. Check it out. Okay, so let's put this in a circuit and do some math and see how it goes. So essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a resistor in here again. Actually, you know what? Let me, um, let me ask you a question. Um, if I were to not put a resistor in my circuit, what would happen? Well, it would blow up. Well, it wouldn't actually blow up, but it would work. What would go on is that we know this thing, it's just this open door. It pretty much says, okay, if you give me a certain amount of voltage, I'll let the current go through. So, but it doesn't have a resistive nature. So, if I were to actually remove this, this circuit wouldn't have any resistance, and as long as that voltage went above the forward bias voltage to make this thing conduct, then there would be no resistance and there would just the current would just be infinite and it would blow really quickly. The LED, actually, take an LED if you want to destroy an LED and just take it on a 9 volt battery and hook it up. It'll, it'll come on very instantly, it'll come on really bright and then it will stop and then it will be broke. Won't work, won't work anymore. Okay, here. So, we did the math before with the diodes and we know that the same thing happens here. Let's actually take a label. I'm going to put the label on here. I chose a diode. Check out this um, spec sheet. So, I grabbed this little thing here from uh, DigiKey, and as you can see, it's got all these values on it, and really what we're looking at is the, the forward voltage and the current. Now, this is actually another screenshot from uh, DigiKey, and if you take a look at this, it, it's actually showing you the, the two main things we want. We need voltage and LED, uh, sorry, we need voltage and current. But it also shows a bunch of other stuff there as well, and those things are important as well. One is the actual wavelength, which is the color. So we're going to focus on those two things, the voltage or the forward bias voltage, and we're also going to take a look at the current. Now, it says it was 20 milliamps. What does it mean? Well, it means that if it takes, if it actually has 20 milliamps, then the candle power or the brightness of it will be what the specification is, so it'll actually be that bright. Um, if you dial it down a little bit and put like 19 milliamps in, you're not going to see a difference in brightness. So it's good to actually underrate them or underflow them a little bit more. Um, the other thing was that the forward bias voltage there. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our forward bias voltage, which is 3.2 volts, and we're just going to say, well, if this thing is on, it's taking 3.2 volts. There's a voltage drop of 3.2 volts, period. So I'm going to write that down. Here we go. So 3.2 volts, and that is my, that's my voltage forward. So I just have a little symbol here. So that's my 3.2 volts. So, you know what, I'm going to label my diode. I have the, the code here. It's C5. So that's the code. It's always good to label the actual code for the components you're putting on here. We don't really label resistors because they're just resistors. Um, you may want to label it that if it needs to be like a one watt resistor, just write that down. Because any resistor that you're, that if you're going to build it or someone else is going to build it, any resistor is just fine. But specifically, if you're going to put some kind of component in here that's really specific, it has these specific attributes to it, you better actually put the code down, the manufacturer's code. So we know that that's the manufacturer's code. We want it to be 20 milliamps. And let's go for this. Let's go for 9 volts. I'm going to use a 9 volt battery because, I mean, you've got one somewhere, right? You can use one. Um, now, what kind of resistor can I choose? Well, I have to choose a resistor that is going to give me a current that is 20 milliamps. And that's what I want. Remember, the current is, the definition of the current is this guy. If I'm gonna actually do the math here, I'm gonna say IR1, which I can also say is I forward, or the forward current through here, but right now I'll just go for IR1. That's gonna be 
VR1 over R1. Now, VR1 in this case is 9 minus 3.2, so 6.8 volts. 6.8 volts divided by, oh, I don't know my resistance. Well, I want my current to be 20. Now, I've done this many times, so I'm just going to ballpark it. I'm going to go for like a 310 because I know that's a resistor I have in my kit. After that, i got to go to a 350 or a little higher, and I'm thinking that probably is the current's going to be a little bit low. So I'm going to go for a 310. So 310 ohms, and if I actually do the math there, I've already actually done the math, um, I'm getting 18.31. So down here, I'm going to sneak that over there. 18.32 milliamps. Okay. So that's not so bad, 18.32 milliamps. You know what, I need to put 20 through there. I want to see if I can just get it a little closer to 20. So we'll try another number. I also have a 300, so IR is going to be my VR divided by my R. In this case, it's 6.8 volts divided by 300. And a 300 is going to give me 19.32 milliamps. I think I'm good. But you know what? I, I don't actually want to get any closer to 20, but I could, and you can actually go over 20 a little bit. You're not going to blow your diode up, your LED, but it won't last as long. So if I really wanted to, I could put a, a 270 in there because I've got one on my kit, but I calculated 270, I did the math here, and I ended up with 21.48 milliamps. It'll still run, it'll be okay, it won't be any brighter than this, at least you won't notice it. And um, it's best to underrate them a little bit because they last longer. Okay, good. So we're going to use a 300 here. Good. So 300 ohms. Nice. So now I've chosen the correct resistor that's going to give me current that's below what this is rated for. And the rating, again, is that if you put 20, 20 milliamps through it, it'll be as bright as it says it will be. And the brightness is actually in candle power. Candle powers are really cool. There are looms and other ways of actually looking at the brightness of things. But candle powers are cool, actually. The way a candle power works is there's a standard white piece of paper. It goes back to, like, square feet. So you got a square foot, one square foot of paper, and um, I'm not sure what the shininess of the paper is, but there's some standard flat mat, or something. I don't know what it is. If you put a candle one foot away from a piece of paper, and you just hold that candle right there in front of one foot square of paper, the brightness coming from that piece of paper is one candle power. Yeah, pretty cool, eh? So that's the, kind of the history of candle power. Um, so those are rated in candle power, and they have other ratings as well. Uh, I think we're good, so you know how to do this. I mean, there's not much more complicated than that, other than if you wanted the power here. Actually, the power is pretty important for these guys. So my power in my diode is going to be a certain amount of energy because these guys generally are more powerful than just a standard diode because they're designed to be. They're designed to actually do work to produce light. So I know my power here, my power of my diode is actually going to be the current through the diode, the forward current through the diode, times the voltage through the diode, and there you go. That's how much current it's going to be. And um, that, that's important because you'll actually know how hot it's going to get. So you may actually, when, when you're getting really bright, one of these, some of these that are really bright, you need to dissipate the heat, and they'll actually produce a lot of heat. So you can get ones that are really bright and really strong and powerful. So there you go. What I want to do now is actually talk about Zener diodes, and I'm just going to do a completely different video on Zener diodes because they're pretty cool. We use them as voltage regulators.